So question 16 then from paper 2, the last question, the last one in part B, the section on the circles and logs. Five mark question and it's that like experimental data type question where what you've got is you've got a suspected form of a relationship between two variables and by taking logs you can actually confirm whether that's the case or not and also thereby find the values of the two numbers in that equation. Well, for five marks, it says, what are the values of these two parts? What's the values of A and B? So you finish off by saying A equals B equals. Well, there's several ways of setting that out. There's really just two techniques. Either you use the equation of the line or you don't. You either use the equation of the line or you use the original equation, which was confirmed just by the fact it was a line, but put the original numbers back into it and get a pair of simultaneous equations. Those are the two separate techniques. Now, the one you'll probably do is the one where you're just going to use the equation of the line. And the difference there would be which way you're going to go. You're going to start with the equation of the line and then gather it back up into this, thereby getting at the values of A and B. Or you're going to start with this and expand it out into this equation of a line and compare it with the values on the line. Those are the, those are the techniques. I know it's got something like four or five techniques, but the, there's essentially three techniques, if you like, then, of the two parts. Start with the equation of the line and gather it up into this. That's one way. Start with this, expand it into the equation of a line and compare it with this. That's the second way. Simultaneous equations. Just get these numbers and put them back in here. Probably you'll start with the equation of the line because that's what you can see you know that equation, so that's probably the one you would use. So, equation of that line. Well, since it's a line, it means it's going to be of this form. I'll just put a big Y. Y equals MX plus C. It's going to look like that, because I've got Y there. What Y simply means whatever the name is in this axis. That X means whatever the name is in this axis. And those M's and C's are the appropriate numbers according to whatever was on those axes. So using that, I know the C cuts at 2. I know the Y, that's a log. I'll just put it down now. So log base 8 of Y, that's what the Y was. I haven't got the gradient yet. I may as well work that out just now. So where will I work it? I'll work it out here. What's the gradient of that line? Well, it'll be the difference in the big Y's and whatever it is up the ways. That's the 4 take away the 2. Subtract divided by the difference along the way, that's the 6 take away the 0. So that's 2 upon 6, so the gradient of that line is a third. So log 8y is a third of whatever it says along the way, and it is just x. So a third of x plus, where does it cut? At 2. That would be the first part, and that's the first mark. Get the equation of that line. Now what you've got to do is gather this up to look like that. That's where it can split into two different ways. Basically just meaning, how do you get rid of that log? There's no logs there, there's exponentials there. How do you get rid of that log? The way I would do it is just use the inverse. So that's one way. The inverse of log base 8 is 8 to the power. So 8 to the power of whatever it said in this side. A third of x plus 2. So that would be a mark. Now, there's just a case of split this lot up. So here, instead of using laws of logs, you're using the laws of indices. If you're multiplying terms, you add their powers. So if, you're, if you've added the powers, you must have multiplied the terms. So that would be 8 to the third x times 8 to the 2. That's worth a mark. Now, I don't know why that with the next mark for splitting this up, because now you would reinterpret that as that product as a power of a power. So that's going to be, I think I'll explicitly state it. So that's 8 to the power of a third, which is just a number, to the power x multiplied by 8 squared. Now it looks like this, because that says you've got 64 times, and that third, that's cube root, 2 to the power x. Now it's exactly in that form. So if you compare that with y equals ab to the x, that would mean that a is the 64, and the B is the 2. 
they've actually given a mark one for each of them but I think that would actually come in here when you split it into that form there so that's the question done that's one way of doing it now, exactly the same method so it's not really a different method would be just how do you handle that log well I just got rid of it straight away so that was it gone another way is to get rid of that log by actually pouring more logs onto it so you've got a log of something eventually equals a log of something and then you can equate whatever they're operating on. So, back to the start again. So what have we got? So you want to introduce logs this time. Instead of getting rid of them, introduce them in order to get rid of them. So in other words, turn these both into terms which are logs of something. Remember, log is the power. Log is the power. Whatever that's the logarithm of, that's the power of 8. So that's your answer. That must be log base 8 of 8 to the power of that. That must be log base 8 of 8 to the power of that. Now, if that's too much of a tongue twister, there's another device you can use instead of that, which is to say this. Well, that term will remain the same if I multiply it by 1. And log base anything of the anything, log base 8 of 8, is just a 1. After all, so I've not changed it. It's just a long way round of interpreting what log means. Do the same here. I could say, well, if I multiply that by log base 8 of 8, well, that's just worth 1. I've not actually changed it, so that's a valid line to put down. So that's worth a mark. And then use that law of logs which says if you've got a coefficient here, anything multiplying goes inside as a power. And then there, now you've created that business about what does log mean? Log base, if log base 8 of something gives this, then it must be log base 8 of 8 to that power. Pop that inside as a power. So that's just a long way around of reinterpreting them as the results of a log calculation. I think that was worth a mark. Then you can use another law of logs if you're adding logarithms it will be the single logarithm of the product and notice what you've done now all you've done now is you've come back to where you were originally ages ago when you just took the inverse and just said eight to the power of this because that's what you've ended up with now, is that worth a mark yes it is but the thing now is if you've got log of something equals log of something because there's only one value that you get for each value of x, it's a proper one-to-one -one function, then that means that that y must be the same as this. Now you're back to where you were. That may well be the way you've been shown to do it. If it is and you're comfortable with it, then just do that. But it just seems an awful lot of writing down instead of just doing the inverse and getting that 8 to the power of this instead of way down here, just getting that straight up here. And now I can just write that out. So that's actually... 16 times 2 to the power x. And then as before, a is the 16, b is the 2. The other way around would be start with this equation and create a line, which is what you would do experimentally if you were testing if that was the connection. You would take the logarithms of both sides and plot those to see if you got a straight line and that would confirm the relationship. So, and of course, at this stage here, you're free to choose whatever logarithm base you like. But here you can see it's been an 8, so I have to take log base 8 then of both sides. So, log base 8 of y is log base 8 of ab to the x. Now, doing that gets a mark. You just start splitting it apart. So you've got the logarithm of a product, so that must have come from the two individual sums. Log base 8 of A plus log base 8 of B to the X. That I can use, that's worth a mark, I think. No, it's not. Take the X out first. Then you can use the law where it says if you've got a power inside, you can take it out to the front. But this time, now, I think I'll take that to the front here and rewrite it over here. So what you've got is x, it's a wee bit backward writing this though, log base 8 of b plus log base 8 of a. That's what you've got all together so far. 
that'll be worth the mark. So that's the equation of a line. So what you're now going to see is that looks like a line because what I've effectively got is y equals mx plus c. So I can compare those values here with the gradient and the intercept here. Well, I've already worked out the gradient, so was that worth a mark? Bring it over would be, so here I can say, well, that m should be a third. Now that m is that log base 8 of b, so now I can say log base 8 of b is a third. That'll be worth a mark. And what I can say here is that log base 8 of, that's an a, is a 2. That's worth a mark. And then just rearrange them. Notice when you're doing it, you're just going to do it properly, aren't you? If log base 8 of b is a third, then that'll be 8 to the power of third. So which means b is a 2. And if that's log base 8 on this side, and I want rid of it, that'll be 8 to the power on the other side. So the a is going to be a 64. So that's quite a neat way as well. You might quite like that and use that by preference. Another different technique, apart from using the equation of the line, is where you just ignore the equation of the line and just work with the original form. So in other words, the only purpose that line served was to confirm the form of that equation. So I don't want that gradient either. Right, so what I would do then is I need to know the original values of x and y because those aren't the original values. They were altered to create this graph. There was a point there. There was a point zero two. That wasn't altered, so that x is fine. That was the original value of x, but that's not the y coordinate. That's the log 8 of y. So log base 8 of y was this 2. So that's interpreting what they mean. That's worth a mark, apparently. And from that, of course, you've then got y equals inverse of log base 8. That'll be 8 to the power. Hey, I'll just leave it like that. So I've got this pair, 0, 8 squared, because I know that when I use the simultaneous equations, you're going to be doing things like multiplying and dividing and so on, so I'll just leave the powers in. Do the same with the point 6, 4. That's still just x, so that 6 was just x. However, that 4 wasn't y, it was log base 8 of y. Which means, using the inverse, it'll be 8 to the power. 8 to the power 4. So there's the other point. 6, 8 to the 4. Now there's actually 3. So there was a mark then for getting the original values of x and y that produced this point and for getting the original values of x and y that produced the other point. So where you are now effectively in terms of that sort of experimental business is you're at the very start. You had this equation and these two sets of measurements and from these two sets of measurements, you can find the parameters in the equation. The whole point of the line was just to confirm that that was the form of the equation. So using those two points, using 0 and 8 squared, well, using them would give you 8 squared would equal AB, 8 times B to the power 0. That's very handy, because anything to the power 0 is 1, so straight away that just tells me that a is 8 squared. I know that's 64, but I'm just going to leave it just now because I've got other 8 to the powers about. Now, doing that gets a mark, although the mark was actually for a is 64, so I don't know if I should really put it in yet. But now that I know what a is, I can go back and use this other point, 6, 8 to the 4. Feed it into that equation and I'll have 8 to the 4 equals a, B to the power 6. So 8 to the 4 equals, but I know A, that's 8 squared. That's why it's handy, because they'll just divide out B to the power 6. Now, that'll come across and divide and knock that down just to 8 squared. So B to the 6 equals 8 squared. I could go to for 64 now, couldn't I? So B is going to be the sixth root of that. I don't know if it would been easier if I'd just done the square root and then the cube root. But in the end, that's going to, but you've got a calculator anyway, I suppose. It's going to come out as 2. And that's going to come out as, now I can put it in, 64. I'm getting the pair there. There's the mark.